Hey guys, this is Dr. Sangeet and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Patchala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way. And today's topic we are going to talk about the classification of the soft palate. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our exciting videos. So guys, talking about the classification of the soft palate. Now this is a frequently asked question for viva, for case history, for theory as well as sometimes it is asked in the neat also. So how are, how are we going to classify the soft palate? First of all, we need to understand that what is a soft palate. This is a skull, right? So as you can see, this part has, is our hard palate. So whatever covering is there of mucosa after the hard palate is our soft palate. So I'm just gonna make it place the sheet like this. Suppose this is the mucosal layer. So what happens? How angle it is going to make after the hard palate so what angle it is going to make after the hard palate is the angulation of the soft palate and it is the main basis for the classification of the soft palate what if i tell you that it is almost straight as you can see in this skull also this is almost straight like how the hard palate is there the soft palate is almost the straight what if the soft palate is descend little bit down so that means it is making somewhere angle 45 degree as you can see it is making an angle somewhere to 45 degree it is going to be the class 2 now what happens when this is more down so this is more more than 45 degree somewhere close to 70 degree will be our class 3 which is the 70 degrees now as you can see in the diagram the dotted one black is the hard palette the soft palette is the one which is in the red in the hanging part so Red is the soft palate, right? As you can see, it is making an angle somewhere in the horizontal level. So, this is an angle. So, if there is a movement of the soft palate, when we are speaking, when we say, ah, when, the, when you know, when you are going to some any ENT doctor and they ask you to say, ah, open your mouth wide and say, ah. So, all these movements... Because of there is no attachment of the soft palate to the bone, right? There is no beneath underlying bone is there. As you can see, bone is the hard palate. Soft palate is the soft tissue. So whenever you speak, what happens? See, whenever you speak, there is, there is going to be the vibration, right? So there is going to be the vibration of the soft palate. So this is the main basis. And if you have studied the PPS, which is the junction of the heart and the soft palate, this is the area where we are going to stop the denture. So the denture actually, and this is the reason that we are going to trim somewhere, some part of the, uh, some part of the cast and we are recording this PPS, so much of hectic procedure. You know why we are doing? So that we compress these tissue little bit, not much little bit, so that there is a tight retention at the posterior border, which will aid in the retention of the denture. That means, in layman terms we are going to press this little bit of soft tissue so that there is a tight seal which is produced at the border so that there is atmospheric pressure which is created so that there is a retention so all these things are actually interconnected and this is the reason that we study the factor affecting the retention this is the reason that we study study adhesion cohesion uh, capillary surface tension so all these things are actually interconnected with each other so let's come to the topic again so this is the soft palate okay uh, and we are going to end our denture in the soft palate. What happens if the soft palate is, has got an angle? Suppose if the soft palate is class 3, which is 70 degree. What if then, then the denture is actually a hard surface. We cannot curve the denture. So we have to stop it somewhere close to the hard palate. And this is the reason that we get less space for the denture. See, in this case, in the class 1, wherein the angle which the soft palate is making with the hard palate is somewhere same. So the movement is less than 10 degrees of the movement while the patient is speaking, right? So the tissue coverage, denture is going to end in the PPS. We know that PPS is a line which is drawn. We are not talking about a specifically anterior or posterior vibrating line, but I'm just telling you in general, the vibrating line is 
the vibrating line will fall in, uh, on the soft palate right so that means we are going to end the denture on the soft palate so in the case of class 1 uh, palate what we have got we have got a huge tissue coverage because this is somewhere horizontal so we can extend our denture more posteriorly not in the soft palate not in the area where an gag reflex will come but we have got a good tissue coverage for the denture for the retention of the denture for the pps area right so the coverage is more than 5 mm we have got for class 1 i hope that you guys are understanding see this is the hard palate then we are going to make the soft palate now what happens this is the soft palate right so so if the angle is somewhere horizontal so we can extend our denture posteriorly right so we have got more tissue coverage so this is good for retention what happens if it is slightly angulated then the tissue coverage is we can not we cannot extend more posteriorly but it will reduce but what if the angle is so much of angulated that is it is somewhere to 70 degree as you can see it is somewhere to 70 degree then there is very less of the tissue coverage we have got so this is the reason that class 3 soft palate if the patient has while we are examining the patient if we find that the patient has got a a steep angle or the 70 degree angle somewhere that means this is least favorable for the retention of the denture that means we we'll usually see that this kind of soft palate is usually associated with a v shaped palatal arch so whenever the patient has got a v shaped palatal arch we will mostly see the class 3 type of soft palate and the class 3 soft palate is now you know that why it is least favorable why it is least favorable because we have got we have to end a denture somewhere here so we have not much of tissue coverage so that we have not much of pps area so that is the reason that least favorable and we know that pps what is the definition of the pps pps is the area which aids in the retention of the denture so if you have specific area for the pps that means there is going to be good retention if you have got not much specific area if the pps area is very less that means there is going to be less retention we know that pps is the posterior extension of the border of the denture which will aid in the retention of the denture so the class 1 soft palate on the degree of the flexure of soft palate how the soft palate is flexed so how the soft palate is flexed this is a class 1 right this is a class 2 this is a class 3 i hope that you guys are uh, under you guys have understand this concept that class 1 is almost horizontal with little movement and it, it makes an while doing the movement it makes an angle of less than 10 degrees with a hard palate therefore we have got more area for the tissue coverage and this is the reason that this is the best uh, favorable soft palate for the retention of the denture so coming to the type 2 it makes an 45 degree angle with a hard palate and the tissue coverage is not as good as class 1 but it is not as bad as class 3 so we have got a tissue coverage of that means behind we have got a tissue 3 to 5 mm which we can include for the retention for the pps then coming to the class 3 is makes an angle of 70 degree with a hard palate and because this angle is so steep and it is usually associated with a v shaped palatal arch so we have got the least tissue coverage and this is the reason that this type of soft palate is least favorable for the retention of the denture so guys this is about the classification of the soft palate so in a nutshell type 1 is making less than 10 degree movement and tissue coverage more than 5 mm and this is best for retention type 2 is when it is making 45 degree angle the tissue coverage we get for the retention of the denture is 3 to 5 mm so it is less than 5 but the type 3 is making an steep angle 70 degree angle usually associated with the v shape palate and the tissue coverage and this is the reason that it is so steep and we cannot curve the denture base like this because denture is so hard and why while making the movement it is going to make such a movement see these this angulation is the movement while the patient is speaking so when the patient is speaking and suppose if you have made denture up till here and when the patient is speaking the soft palate will raise till here but what happens if you have made the denture border extension till here the soft palate will move and this 
this movement will cause the dislodgement of the denture posteriorly the denture will lift and the patient when the patient speaks the denture will come out if you extend in case of class 3 soft palate so posteriorly so this is what happens in uh, the soft palate plays role in the retention of the denture hope that you guys have enjoyed the video if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up also you can comment in the comment section below there is a link in the description box below to support me on paytm as well as on paypal to make free videos for you guys and to make free notes so till then keep reading keep learning stay motivated i'll see you soon in the next video